Hello everyone, welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Today we're taking on Legendary Mo. Goes by just goes by Mo on Twitch. I believe it's Legendary Mo, but uh, he usually just people just call him Mo on Twitch. Uh, he's really active in the battle community, so a pretty nice guy. Um, we're doing an OU battle. We battle quite often on on, on stream. Uh, he's always a tough guy to battle because he makes like these insane doubles sometimes, and this makes it kind of hard for me to get uh, to get momentum. But uh, anyways, we're having a good match here. Uh, I he's kind of an interesting team. With uh, Specs, Rotom Heat, Fighting MZ, Magirna, with Focus Blast, Shift Gear, and then Double Steel Staff, which is kind of a bad set. Um, I debated if I should run Fairy MZ or, f or Fighting MZ, but I kind of wanted to run Fighting MZ to, to take on bulky Steel types. And um, and then Scarf Bulu was just kind of interesting. It's becoming a bit standard, so I went ahead and used that. But he's using a pretty interesting team as well. He's got Magnezone, which is always a nice, it's very nice mod in, in this meta. I really like Magnezone in this meta. It's really nice. It walls a lot of things. Since the speed isn't too much too high in this tier, like pe people aren't using the fastest things in the world, that it can just like it can do it or do its own. And oh, you, uh, Mega Pinter is kind of scary because I, I gotta save Landers for that and keep my Gengar's Focus Sash intact. So keeping rocks up off, keeping rocks off the field, and limiting Gengar's uh, participation in this battle is quite key. I just gotta save that Sash. Um, this is actually my second take of this recording because it kind of just froze on me. Hopefully, it doesn't do it again. But um. Uh, also, side note: the audio has been fixed. My mic has finally been fixed. I finally changed the setting to where the loud, like the volumes, aren't too loud. So now you guys don't hear like blow-ups in the in the in the sound. So should be sounding a lot, uh, a lot more clean. The audio, but anyway. So key here is keeping uh, Gengar Sash intact, and then Rotom Heat alive as well, because his Amoongus could just live everything if I just leave that to be. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. So I am challenged by the legendary trainer, legendary Mo Pokemon trainer, legendary Mo. So here, I lead off with Rotom Heat because he does not have a switch into Specs Rotom uh, Specs Overheat, as he leads with the Stormy, which is interesting on his part. Because if I'm Scarf Rotom, I can just one shot him. So um, people were saying he was Scarf in the chat, and with that in mind, and I just figured he'd switch out. I double into my Tapu Fini, predicting Landers, but he actually just stay in and goes for a. Uh, he actually does decide to stay in. And as you can tell, because he's, he's still on the field, but he went for Scald there, um, which was interesting. So people were telling me he was Scarf. I mean, it's kind of sucks that I knew his set before he even like battled. But um, I mean, I was gonna switch out anyway because he can go into Lando. Um, otherwise, I could click Overheat or something. But with that in mind, I just went ahead and swapped soft into Feeny. And here I'm gonna go ahead and just go for the Nature's Madness, predicting either something like either Landorus. I mean, not Landorus, either Amoongus. Magnezone or Celesteel to come out. Either one of the three was fine. So I honestly thought he would go into Amoongus because with Amoongus, if he takes 50%, he can always switch back out and get his health back with Regenerator. So going into Magnezone, uh, probably shouldn't have done that the first time, but I guess he just wanted to scare out Tapu Fini immediately. immediately. Um, so here, I don't have a good switch into Rotom, to Magnezone, so I just go right back out to Rotom Heat. As he makes a nice double, like I said, he makes nice doubles into his Starmie once again. Now, I know Scald probably wouldn't kill Rotom Heat at full, because he got very nice base defenses. But um, I don't want him taking damage, because like I said, if if um, if he's in like quick attack range, or if Amoongus can take him out, then that would be very bad. Uh, so here, I go back on the Fini, because Fini just wall Starmie completely. Even if he has like Thunderbolt, it wouldn't do much to me at all. Um, but as you can tell, he's not going to risk his Starmie. Um, so here I go back on Fini, and I can just click uh, Nature's Madness again to just, I don't know, half one of his Mons, you know, cut him in half, essentially. As here, he does go into his Gunky Mooney, the Amoongus, which is very annoying. Like I said, if this thing did not, if I did not save Rotom Heat, this thing would just run wild on my team. Um, like I said, I do have Taunt on this thing, but Sludge Bomb can just wreck me. And, uh, well, actually, it wouldn't do too much, but he can just outplay, he can out, I mean, he can't beat it 1v1. But if you were to be like have other teammates, then he can definitely take down my Feeny. So now the miss is gone. So I didn't want to switch out to anything because I was afraid he would go for a Spore. So here I go for Taunt as he makes a double into his Starmie. Probably predicting Rotom Heat again, I would assume. So I I'm not sure. I guess he just wanted to. S I guess he predicted Rotom Heat. Or even like Landers or something. But uh, So here you go to bring out Starmie again. I do wall this thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay in and click the Nature's Madness. And I'm assuming he's going to bring back out Amoongus or maybe a Steel type as he actually brings in Warzone, which is his Celesteela. Now, I hate Celesteela. I hate this thing. It looks so... I mean, it looks so great in Citra, though. Like, I hate it. I hate the way it's, like, so bulky. I don't really use it all that much, but it looks so nice in Citra. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, yeah, so Celesteela comes in. Um, I figured I could just switch out into Rotom Heat because I'm not sure what he can do to me except, like, Late Sheet. So, as he actually goes for a Totemize, which, uh, which was great because, I mean... 
I I'm glad it's the offensive set rather than like a bulky set. Although the offensive set arguably is more troublesome for my team than defensive. So here, he has no switch into Specs Overheat, so I went ahead and just clicked it. And he actually brings in his Landry's T. Now, depending on what his set was, it didn't matter. He was going to drop. If he was defensive, he was going to drop. I'm pretty sure. If he was offensive, he was going to drop. So, Specs Overheat from Roto, Max Attack, Tim and Nature. Just one shot to Landry. So, rocks are not coming up today. Uh, Landry's didn't really do, do too much for his team. Um, although, it did kind of take down McGearna. But, I mean, besides that, it didn't do much. So I guess it wasn't a bad attack on his part. So, here, of course, the minus two. I was locked in overheat. I'm switching out to my Tapu Fini. I mean, to my Magirna this time. Uh, just because I know I kind of wall this, sort of. I think she goes for Thunderbolt this time, predicting the uh, Tapu Fini. So, it's a good play on my part, I suppose. But Thunderbolt still does a lot, and I get parried. And, which sucks, because I do I am running the shift gear set. So, that paralyzed did suck. But, um, later on, it's going to prove to be a little bit helpful. Now, it's lagging a bit. Sorry for the lag a little bit there, but... Um, here I go for Flash Cannon, just predicting Amoongus to come in. Um, I do have the Fighting MZ stone, so here I gotta be careful because I want to use it right and I don't want to waste it. So here I clicked it, I believe. No, actually I go for Flash Cannon. Oh, I clicked it here, I think, because I thought it would switch out to um, Celesteela to predict. I mean, to just like try to set up on me, and because you know I can't really touch it from what he knows. So here I go for it again, and I get paralyzed. No, the first time I went Flash Cannon, the second time I went Fighting MZ, uh, Focus Blast. I just go for Sludge Bomb predicting me to switch out. So that Paralyze actually helped me out because it saved me the stone. And here I click it again, and he actually does switch out into his Celesteela. So I am actually able to break out of Paralysis and fire off the all-out pummeling Focus Blast. And this looks awesome. Uh, so it was really a nice read on my part, but like... His Paralyze didn't help me out because if I actually did not get Paralyzed the second turn, I would have wasted it on his Amoongus. So, this is very, very nice to get this off. Because hitting a Focus Blast through Paralysis is almost like hitting a, a Sheer Cold. It's just not possible. So here, Magirna is just going to beat up the Celesteela and just, you know, you know, take it down and just beat the crap out of it. This is what I would do to Celesteela. I hate it with a passion. But, um, I mean, given that he was offensive, I guess Focus Blast probably could have killed it, depending on his set. But... Here, McGinna grabs, grabs her kill, gets a special attack boost, and of course he can just bring in his Magazone, which can trap me in here. I don't have Volt Switch, so I'm forced to stay in and try to go for the uh, Focus Blast to knock it out. But um, as you can see, the Thunderbolt did knock me out, so I was under the impression he was a choice specs because I'm not sure who would have killed uh, with any other set. So here, I go into Rot I mean, Landers T to get on my rocks because, you know, I. Uh, I knew, was, I knew he was choice locked. Like, I knew he was specs. Because I'm pretty sure Scarf or Assault Vest wouldn't have killed. So, I actually had to go for U-Turn here. Because I didn't want to go for a South Rock. Yeah, I go for U-Turn because uh, he has Stormy. So, I figured he'd go right into that. But, um, let's go for U-Turn there. I should have gotten a Rock, though, in case Pinter became a big problem. But, I didn't. So, here I go back on the Rotom. And, of course, with no switch into it, I'm going to click Specs Overheat again. If you want to sack a Moon, it's good for me. If not, you know, whatever. But, I do go for the Overheat. He did stay in. I'm assuming he just stayed in because he thought I'd over predict and go for like Thunderbolt or Volt Switch. Uh, like I said, he does make these uh these predictions a lot. So, but um, I mean we've been playing a long time, so I guess we're starting to under understand each other's moves now. So it's really proving to be interesting matches with him. So this definitely won't be the last time I have a battle with him on channel. So here, of course, I switch out. I have to switch out because I'm locked in. As he makes a double into his pins here, <laughs> predicting my Tapu Fini to come out. Because Tapu Fini can pretty much be set up on by this pincer. So at this point, he's kind of losing options because he's losing his minds. And at this point, I'm pretty sure he's just going to go for set up, set up, set up the uh, Swords Dances. Try to break through my team. Man, this battle taking forever. Uh, but like I said, I want, I want time to, you know, commentate and narrate what I'm trying to do here. So he goes SD. And uh, like I said, Gengar has not been on the field. So I do have my Sash intact. And as long as I get damage off on this thing, it should not be a big problem. I do have Landry's T in the back. So... He's probably going to have to set up two Swords Dances to break through Landris. So here I just go for Moonblast. I did not want to risk missing Landris Madness because that, that could have been a big deal. So, And as you can tell there, Moonblast is almost a two-shot anyway. So um, Here he does risk the roll and just go for Swords Dance again. <laughs> but I was always taking risks like that. Um, I also did have the Rocky Helmet on Landris. So if he, if he is living at a sliver of health, he will drop to the Landris. So uh, Moonblast is going to go for it again and that does not knock him out. I guess he got lucky with the... With the uh, low rolls. I mean, those are probably max rolls, honestly, those first two. Uh, and in return, of course, is able to just destroy my top of Fini. And at this point, I figured, okay, Scar Scarf's army is not going to do any work, so I'm just going to go ahead and sack this off. And uh, here I go into Landris over Gengar, because I don't want to lose Sash on Gengar. I figured I can just uh, 
Save his save Sasha and Gengar in case the army does get out of control. I can just kill it with a revenge kill it with a sludge with the uh, shadow ball. So here I just uh, stay in. I click stealth rock because it didn't it didn't really matter what I clicked because he was in an outer rocking helmet anyway. So and as you can see, it is one shot at my lander at plus three. So lander is dead. Didn't really do much in that game, but it didn't really need to. Uh, so yeah, now he's down to his scarf stormy and his magna zone. So here I just go into my uh, I believe I go on a top of Bulu. Yeah, top of Bulu, because I am Choice Scarf. And uh, I can just uh, threaten out this Starmie. Even if he has Choice Scarf, he can't kill me with one shot. So i just going to click, go ahead and click Wood Hammer twice, because it should be able to win the game here, as he does switch out to his Magna Zone. And at, at, at the percentage Magna Zone that, over like 55%, 50% around. Well, it's 50% because it's he has an extra madness, but Wood Hammer is actually able to knock out. Uh, this, is, this is, of course, Jolly Nature Choice Scarf, so it just destroyed uh, Magna Zone, which is crazy. I honestly thought it would live, but... It was Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu is a beast. Cause, I mean, it's a beast. And then last, of course, is his Starmie, which has been playing around all game with his Toy Scarf shenanigans. And here we're finally able to confirm he is Toy Scarf, being faster than my Bulu. But of course, Bulu is going to tank that like a champion. And I can pick up the victory, the victory with the uh, Wood Hammer, which looks awesome, etc. So, hope y'all enjoyed the battle. Very interesting game here. Uh, it's always interesting battles with Mo and. Um, like he destroyed me with a psychic, a psychic team the other day, and it was a really crazy team. So that was really. I wish I would have recorded that one. That would have been nice, uh, but I think I didn't because I don't remember why I didn't. But anyway, hope you enjoyed today's battle. I'll be back for maybe some like I'm gonna try to get some Ubers matches going, and then of course once RU like settles down, I'll figure that out as well. But hope you all enjoyed, and I'll be back next time. Take care.